Let's start this way. You know, the, the public mostly knows you for your interest in UFOs, but you've actually, <coughs> most of your adult life, been interested in the two big questions. Are we alone? Yeah. And what happens after we die? Right. Um, Those are the two holy grails. Those are the biggest questions there are. Yeah. Your interest in consciousness, survival of consciousness after death, though, actually precedes you jumping into the deep end of the pool on UFOs, doesn't it? <clears throat> uh, well, if you don't count <clears throat> things that happened to my family, right. you know, when I was a little kid, I think the, uh, <clears throat> this, the uh, Are We Alone came first when I was a kid uh, because of events that happened to my grandparents, uh, to my mother and my grandparents, and then maybe even to me when I was a kid. Um, and then I committed when I was about 12 years old <clears throat> to really get into this someday. When I grew up, and I, if I had money, and trying to figure a way how to make money in order to commune with other people, maybe create uh, some kind of groups or whatever to help me uh, explore. And so it was very... Uh, uh, pre-engineered that I had I had done the engineering on on the, on the uh, effort to try to go do these kinds of things you know while trying to make a living and support a family and all that so uh, the UFO experience yeah uh, I know there's a little bit of information about that has come out uh, about your grandparents right can you tell us wh how, your involvement though why you think it involved you as well well <clears throat> um, I was probably 10 years old when, I, when my mother was telling me the story of, of uh, my grandparents' incident and their encounter. Um, and that was back in 1947, about May of 1947, when, when they had their encounter. And I was about three years old at the time, and I wasn't with them. And uh, that night was a night that they didn't want to talk about, especially my grandfather. My grandmother would barely talk about it, but all the information really I got was from my mom. And, uh, <clears throat> and so that was a super close encounter that they had. Um, was it just a sighting or <clears throat> was there something else to it? <clears throat> Don't know. You know, I've, I've, I've done a lot of research in the ET UFO area. And <clears throat> if I were looking at this objectively as a, in a, as a third party situation, I would say <clears throat> they were good candidates for being abducted that night. Um, Apparently, they were on the side of the road for a long time in order for my grandfather to recoup himself. They thought they were, they were going to die. And <clears throat> because of the UFO coming in to the, filled up the entire windshield of the car, and so it, it came into their view so dramatically, and they expected it, a, a crash was going to happen, and then it just shot off. And um, so, <clears throat> you know, I, I kind of think that they got home a lot later than they ever expected to get home, back down from this, this mountain highway. And um, so I think that's possible, you know, they, that they may have had an encounter. 1947 is a pretty momentous year. <clears throat> it was. It was about two months before Roswell. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Ken Arnold was in there about the same time frame. So whatever their experience was, they didn't want to talk about it. That was something that bothered <clears throat> them for a long time. No, they didn't, especially my grandfather. He didn't want to talk about it, and and because uh, I tried a couple of times, and my grandmother would just barely say anything about it. So and it shook them up and stayed with them the rest of their lives. But the, your mom got enough information out of it to piece this story together. Yeah, yeah. And, and <clears throat> I think... Um, my father uh, talked to my grandfather about it because my father began to be interested in the, in the topic and, and buy books on it. Well, there weren't many of, of decent books, just maybe, you know, he had maybe three or four. And, uh, and so he wasn't caught up in just the interest as a family member hearing about this, you know, from, from his in-laws. And... Uh, uh, but he never, it was my mother that told me the story, not my dad, about what happened to the in-laws. You had other experiences as a young youngster uh, that sort of clued you in that something was going on. You have shared those with me privately. I don't know if you want to talk about them publicly or not. <clears throat> well, it's just that I had, I had a, um, a series of repeated dreams that didn't make any sense uh, when I was probably uh, uh, seven, eight years old or so. And um, it was always the same stupid dreams, same thing. And had no point to them. And I couldn't connect the dream to anything. I couldn't connect it to comic books. Um, 
and uh, we didn't have television. And when I was seven or eight years old, you know, that would have been around 50, 52, um, and I would have been eight. And um, as you know, television came in, in 53 or four in that time frame. 53 here. And yeah. so, and it wasn't in the movies, and it was the same stupid dream. I'm, I'm, I'm in bed, laying on my side, and I'm, I'm in a twin bed that's up against the wall, the corner of a, of a small bedroom. And um, I'm laying there, and there are three somethings in some kind of monk uh, clothing. Couldn't see any appendages, could see that there were some kind of arms, but I couldn't see faces, couldn't see hands or anything like that, if, if in fact they, they were people. And they were about eye level as I'm laying in bed. So they're pretty short. And um, they were there. I wasn't afraid. <clears throat> and these dreams were the same dream about six, maybe half a dozen times, plus or minus. <clears throat> and so <clears throat> through all the research again that I've done <clears throat> for a lot of years uh, with abductees, I thought, well, somebody would tell me the story. Uh, I, I, sh I would want to regress these, this person and s see if they were a candidate, you know, had been abducted or something. I don't know. So I chalked it up to dreams, and I still think that that's um, as good an answer as whether or not I had something more, but I'll, I'll accept a, a very um, peculiar set of dreams as the explanation today. We fast forward to about 1980. Um, something happens in your family that galvanizes your attention to want to know more about the other side, whether we go on. Yeah. <clears throat> well, actually, the, 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 first, um, the first impact for that was before that oh. for me. It was when I was 18, and my father was killed in a pl private uh, plane crash <clears throat> a plane that belonged to a friend of his, and um, and so um, that happened when I, in my first semester of school of college, and uh, uh, that was very dramatic for me. Uh, we never had a funeral, so there was no closure there. My mother didn't want that, and uh, <clears throat> so um, and the, and. There was a, the plane exploded, it hit something on the ground, it hit a, a, a structure on the ground, and uh, so there's a fire and everything, and, and the, there wasn't, you know, um, probably much left. And um, <clears throat> so it took me 10 years to stop having dreams about him. And, and uh, that's a long, a whole decade before I could finally stop having all different kinds of dreams and um, I don't, they weren't parent, I wouldn't classify them as paranormal dreams. It was just <clears throat> um, an event <clears throat> where now you have someone very close to you that, that, uh, that passed over and <clears throat> so, you, so the seed is planted, right? The seed is planted as the curiosity, <clears throat> with what about survival? Is there any opportunity for that whatsoever? I mean, you know that this is blasphemy and for a lot of religions and, and certain precepts for people who already are, are committed to their own beliefs because either their parents were, whole family was, and that's what they're taught, or whatever it might be, they say, no, there, there, there is no survival at all. This is it. This is the end. And then you have agnostics. So you have people who don't know, and that's, that's fair. Um, so it's not as though everybody in the world buys off on any of this. You know, people need proof. And I, I really appreciate that because I'm, I'm a doubting Thomas. I have to have a lot of white crows on my pile, and then I have to have multiple piles of white crows, <laughs> right? Because <clears throat> I really want to know. And, and so I've gotten into, the, into the, these fields uh, fairly deeply, especially in the ET UFO field. And uh, not and more more deeply than I have in the survival field, you know. But you're right. Back in about 1980, <clears throat> um, my wife and I we we lost um, our son uh, <clears throat> later, and and we uh, uh, I had already been investigating, fortunately, this topic, and it helped me <clears throat> um, in in his death and in being able to cope with our son's death later on. The thought that 
he goes on in some fashion. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> that there was hope that um, that uh, his consciousness, some part of him, survives, survived, and um, that was very comforting to me. <clears throat> I, I saw, I had little <clears throat> visitations with with maybe three uh, mediums, and um, I remember one of them was George Anderson, very very nice fellow, and uh, he was helpful. Um, my wife also saw him as well. Uh, we asked him to come to Las Vegas, and he did. And, uh, and that helped us a great deal with that tragedy. You're trying to, and this is an emotional atom bomb for you and your wife, right? Oh, yeah, as it would for any, any yeah. families, uh, sure, yeah. You, you used the mediums to try to communicate. You wanted to see if you can communicate. <clears throat> I, you know, we weren't that sophisticated. Um, basically, it was... Can you, can you uh, express to us some things as to what's coming across to you, to the medium, that we haven't told you and you wouldn't probably know, can you kind of establish proof that there is an existence there on the other side? Um, and, and then um, I think as close as we got to any kind of messaging uh, beyond establishing that he was in some sort of communication, was, is he well? Is he okay? You know, and uh, we didn't get it to, to very sophisticated as to, you know, start, would you tell us a little bit as to what the other side is all about? Just a little bit, a teeny little bit of anything, you know, <clears throat> because and to me, that's, <clears throat> that is once you've gotten past trying to establish is there anything to the other side at all? Is it, is it real? Is it partially real? You know, is there a one white crow there that you can't explain? Well, then you start to say, okay, if it is, if it might be real, <clears throat> it's really important to you as to what am I going into? What is it all about? What am I, what, what am I going to turn into? And what am I going to be able to do? And, uh, you know, is it going to be miserable and misery, or is it going to be something that's, that has elation to it and uh, a lot of gratification? You know, you feel like you have worth. So you're, you have these three mediums. You give it a try. You don't really get anything solid from them, or you get a little bit hints that it might be real? Well, frankly, uh, I think um, two of the three, one especially was very dubious. <laughs> I, I mean, it was, it was bizarre, so I chalk him up. Another lady, um, this black lady, I think she, she was probably legitimate. Again, I was so green into this. I didn't know what to ask, what to say, but I think I recall that she had said some things that were really intriguing. And then George, you know, so it's not like I did any real research at all, you know, um, but... Um, and then our grandson passed, and, uh, and he died. And so again, this field uh, uh, was comforting, again, to embrace the possibility that there is going to be some kind of survival. And it really, really helps coping with these kinds of uh, tragedies, you know, so. You know, it's, the, it's a huge question. Everyone should be involved. Nobody gets out of here alive. It'd yeah. be nice to know that you go on. That's always yeah. been the province of religion. You know, uh, they tell us if you're good, you go on, you go here, you go there. Um, but you're looking for something more substantial. And, you know, people do uh, tend to put that thing in the side of their head and not think about it because they don't want to contemplate death. Yeah. Well, we have, we have all kinds of horror movies about zombies and about, you know, um, it's... <clears throat> So entertainment uh, has taken and, and made it scary, you know, for children and even adults.